Bonsoir et merci au, au comité de, de Living Soil Symposium de m'inviter à parler ce soir. Um, my name is Michael Warren and I'm the CEO of Clean Technologies. Uh, we're a Montreal-based company dedicated to producing uh, sustainable microbial technologies. We work in two main sectors. We work in agriculture and we work in dust control using microbial technologies. We currently operate in 20 countries, and getting to this point has been an interesting journey. Tonight I'd like to talk to you about the future of agriculture as we see it, more precisely the next inflection point. What's agriculture? That's always the question that kills. It's defined as a science, I consider it an art. The practice of cultivating soil produce crops. It sounds silly to say, but soil is the primary component of agriculture. We've forgotten this along the way. It's something that we don't understand thoroughly. We don't get how it really works. We haven't spent that much time looking at it. Agriculture, all agricultural production really uh, rests on the fact that these biologicals are working in the soil, that they're alive, they're thriving, and they're supporting the food that we grow. Um, we've ignored this because for one very simple reason. We've been focusing on increasing agricultural production based on two axes, the physical characteristics and the chemicals. That's what's been increasing yields. Not, a much, not enough thought has gone into the impact of these applications on soil. Uh, even though the foundation of agriculture today, we spend very little time reflecting on what's going on in the soil. This neglect has had a tremendous impact on the environment and the true economic costs of these we have yet to understand. How do we reverse soil degradation? How do we feed the world's population? Um, we know that we need to go forward in a sustainable and environmental fashion. The next inflection point will have to be the acceptance by modern conventional agriculture of the use of biologicals in agriculture. It's what will allow us to promote yield, or to increase our yields and the quality of the crops that we grow. It's the belief of Earth Alive, and our focus is on a first soil first philosophy. We've seen inflection points in the past. You're not gonna like them. I don't like them, but it's reality. The physical properties of soil, when we started tilling the soil, we increased production a little bit. And then the chemicals came on. The agrochemical companies started offering all these great fertilizer products, or so they were supposed to be. Um, the so-called green revolution. I'm not I'm a little bit after the Green Revolution, but I've never quite understood why it was so green. We seem to be at the point where uh, all those things are plateauing. We're not seeing great increases in yield, despite the greater and greater inputs of fertilizer. We, in many cases, are seeing decreases in production. The next inflection point is the one that will allow an increase in food production in both quality and quantity, and it can only be biological. When I first started this business years ago, uh, I would set in to say that everybody who was interested in this topic, we probably would have been just a couple of us in the room, and judging by the crowd here, it's changing. When we first started, we had this vision of a microscope on every farm. Like this one here. 
we're trying to make farmers change the way that we're doing things, the way that we're growing crops. We're trying to promote organics, switch to organic. We're trying to promote composting, we're trying to promote compost, compost extract, and compost teas. We quickly ran into a number of issues. Um, it wasn't that the resistance to the product was there, is that we weren't fitting in farmers' systems. Now don't get me wrong, I'm a big believer in Dr. Ingram's work. On-farm work is certainly the way of the future, but we have to get there first. We have to get people to see a difference. We have to see, get people to see a different way of doing things. It requires changes, changes from the farmer's point of view, and they weren't ready to make it. So we have to find a way to create a product that meets the farmers where they are, that fits into their systems. We weren't working on farm, so we were facing a couple of issues with stability. We were facing issues with application. The other issue that we started running into is we were selling these products. And as we started selling these products, we ran into what we call the registration framework. The process of registration of biostimulants and biofertilizers and so on and so forth varies from state to state, from country to country. And having different requirements in creating a, it creates a bit of an awkward situation because we have different classifications for the same thing in different regions. We need a registration and regulation body that's adapted and up to speed on where we are with biological products. Today, most of the regulations uh, were developed out of the chemical industry. The processes are demanding both in time and money, but that's not the problem. It's that it doesn't reflect the reality of biologicals. We have to understand that biology is not easy to define. We can't stop a microbe from performing certain functions. The best example would be a simple bacillus. It's considered a bioprotection agent, but that's not all that it does. You've been put in that box. You're a fertilizer, you're not a pesticide. You're a soil amendment, but you're not a soil inoculant. And that doesn't really work. What the system doesn't understand is that Mr. Bacillus, will not just do one function because the registration says that's what it's supposed to do. <coughs> the registration uh, framework is uh, the first and most important to address because that's what allows corporations to sell product. Um, I certainly don't advocate for lack of regulation. Rather, development of regulations that are adapted to the realities of healthy soil. We've faced this countless times. We've achieved registrations in 20 countries, and in many instances, we're not the same thing everywhere we go. <clears throat> We've had to dump, jump through some interesting groups. The process can take months, and it can take years, and that's problematic. There is no reason why it needs to be so complicated. The second issue we run into, which we've mentioned, is the cultural shift. For years we've been telling our population that microbes are bad. There's no such thing as a good bacteria. Fear marketing has sold hundreds of thousands of gallons of antimicrobial sprays, gels, this, that, and the other thing. What we realize now is that wiping out bacteria only, and we only end up with worse bacteria that create worse issues. And so we need to all accept that microbes are okay. 
and we need to change the views regarding this. Soils that are sterile yield very poorly. Biodiversity yields great. Now, going back to my, my initial issues when I first got into this, we needed to create a product that fit the current farming systems. I live in, in an organic family, and in many instances beyond organic on, on our farm. But to create change, we need to go at the worst common denominator, and I don't mean to be insulting when I say this, but it's the guys that are out there that are growing in a chemical format. Those are the guys where we have to start to create change. We have to get them on board. That's how we're going to do it if we're going to do it on a large scale. Asking a farmer to buy a new piece of machinery to increase our production on the biological scale is a little bit difficult. Um, increasing the time spent in the field. A farmer's job is just like just about all of us. It's getting the much, as much as he can from that field in, with the least amount of input. And so when the acreage is large and the windows of opportunity are small, um, asking them to add hours to increase the biologicals in their fields is a hard sell, even with the promise of increased yields. However, in our experience, when all the pieces come together, it's pretty neat. The good management of biologicals on farm leads us to great achievements, well past simple harvests. Our goal has been to develop a market microbial technology to bring soil first approaches to agriculture. Products that can be incorporated in current farming systems that can withstand the realities of supply chains. We've come face to face with these challenges, speaking to conventional farmers about biologicals, convincing regulators that bacteria are not bad, convincing transport companies that we're not hazardous material, and so on. I thought I, I, you'd find it interesting to meet Juan and Ramon. They're banana farmers in the Dominican Republic. They were having serious issues with their production. Their yields were way below the country's average. The chemical med, their, their chemical system had maxed out and begun to fail. The solution from their agronomists and local experts was very simple. It has to be physical. We're going to rip out all the banana plants, then we're going to bring in bulldozers, we're going to rip it all up, and then we're going to start from scratch. They weren't so thrilled about that aspect. But what else were they going to do? Chemicals hadn't worked. Physicals were all that was left. It worked out that we ran into them, and given that they had little to lose, they gave us a try. After three months, the fields came back to life. They started producing more bananas on a weekly basis. They started seeing plants that were healthier. By adding biology into their soil, they're now well above the national average. They reached that inflection point. They were able to go and get the next level of output without having to rely on altering the physical characteristics of their soil or add other chemicals. Last time I saw them, uh, they're both about this high. <laughs> they grabbed me and they gave me a big kiss and they said, we've never made so much money in our lives. <laughs> and this was at a cost that was far less than bringing in the bulldozers. I've got another one for you. A small scale farmer. Yeah. A small scale, a small scale for a farmer, um, Andres, who is in Peru. He leases land, which is quite common, and he grows tomatoes and squash. We met him while we were on tour in, in Peru, visiting smallholders and cooperatives. He had very little interest in biologicals. He'd been told that they were expensive um, and that they were a real pain to incorporate into his production. So the conversation was short. However, we did convince him to try 100 meters 
of tomatoes. After four weeks, he was a believer. He applied biologicals to all of his acres. He doubled his yield that year. That's pretty significant for somebody who's living hand to mouth. He increased, his, he increased his lease, so he got more land behind him. He grew his business, he employed more people, and he became an ambassador for the use of biologicals and conventional agriculture. Every year that goes by, he tells us that he's able to cut back on the amount of chemical and physical changes that he's putting on his farms. He's reached that inflection point. Now, if we go back to our triangle, physical, it's kind of, I simplify it a lot. I think it's easier that way. I'm not a scientist. I come from the business world. It has to be very simple for us. Um, the physical and the camera, the, the, the approaches, these are the norms. This is, this is how it is today if you're a farmer. That's the information that's out there. Um, that's standardized. It's comfortable. Uh, it's what the industry tells us to do. And that's what people know. Now, this is changing, due in part to a lot of the organizations that are represented here. But we're just getting started. It isn't enough for individual farmers to experience this biological inflection point. We need agriculture as a whole to experience it. We need the entire industry to accept it. We need to reach this inflection point across the industry for agriculture to move into the future. Feeding a growing population with safe food, sustainable food, nutritious food, and I would say environmentally friendly food. Now, Thomas Edison said, a vision without execution is an hallucination. I think it's time to act. Thank you. Merci.